I want to discuss a few concepts in Chinese medicine and natural medicine. Okay. So we talk about something called qi. And qi is oxygen. Excuse me, spell qi, qi. It's C-H-I or Q-I, either way. I'll put C-H-I. It's oxygen and energy in the body. And we need both oxygen and energy for the body to work properly. Okay. Then we also have blood. And that's a liquid that flows from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart then out through the body, through the arteries. And then there's gases exchanged and nutrition that the cells take. And there are toxins and waste that get dumped into the blood to be cleaned out. Then it goes back through the veins. filtered by the liver and the kidneys and the spleen and it goes past the small intestine where nutrients from the food is pulled into the bloodstream. Then it goes back to the heart, and it starts all over again. So I'm doing this arrow showing that the oxygen is flowing in the blood. And this is organs. So this is the blood flowing to the organs. And we also have blood and oxygen flowing to the sea in S. CNS, then what does that mean? That is central nervous system. And central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord together. Surrounding the brain and the spinal cord are three membranes like plastic wrap. They, they are called meninges. And they totally surround the spinal cord and the brain and they protect it. But they also control the flow of blood and oxygen. And another fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. And cerebrospinal fluid is only found in the brain and the spine. That is why it's called cerebrospinal fluid. If the meninges get twisted, then the blood and the oxygen doesn't always get to all the parts of the brain. So then the brain doesn't work as well. The meninges also surround all of the nerves coming out from the spinal cord. and from the brain. So the, the brain has 12 cranial nerves.
Wow. For example, the optic nerve for the eye. There's an oculomotor nerve. which turns the eyes. There's one for the nose, also one for the ears. So if the meninges get tugged on or twisted, sometimes it can affect those nerves also. Okay. All right. So when we have enough energy and blood flowing to the organs, and central nervous system, then the, the chi provides oxygen to the body, the blood provides nutrients, the organs provide things like hormones, And the central nervous system provides things like messages that control the body. When this is all working properly, we have what is called a 100% function. And in Chinese medicine, a hundred percent percent function is also called harmony and we also describe that it as ease so it's easy to move without pain it's easy to remember words It's easy to sleep. It's easy to stay asleep. It's easy to wake up in the morning. It's easy to poop. Etc. Everything. Everything. Yeah. If there is a blockage, then the oxygen, the nutrients, and the hormones and messages become disrupted. And we call that stagnation. So the cave that you the word that you have there? Stagnation. S T A G N A. -T -I -N. So like stag. It reminds me of something. Like when you're in a cave and you see the top of the roof oh, of the yes. cave. Stalactites and stalagmites. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. So this is a blockage. It's like if I wrap something around her finger like this. Uh -huh. What would happen to the finger? It would become purple, blue and purple. And would it change the feeling in it? Um, it would be cold. It would feel numb. And eventually? It would not feel comfortable. There would be pain. And if this was on for a week or two? Decay. Decay, exactly, exactly. So that is an example of what blockage is, or the stagnation. So how do we deal with this right here? Release it. Exactly, exactly. So when stagnation happens, it is because of one of three things. Stress. Oh, I know that one really well. <laughs> Trauma. And toxicity.
Food too. Have food also, yeah. yeah. So the food could be related to a toxic reaction. Also. Right, right. When the stagnation occurs, the function decreases. When our body gets to 80% of functioning. So when that happens, like when you're exercising, inactive, when you're inactive, that also happens? Stagnation happens with inactivity also. Okay. So with the stagnation at 80% function, So we've lost 20%. We start developing malfunction. Yes. If the stagnation is not corrected. Like disease. When I see that, I think of disease. That's next. She's very, okay. She's so smart for me. You're too smarter than I am. Okay. So if this is not removed, then the function decreases more. And so at 60% function, that's when we get disease. And so if the stagnation still continues, just like with her finger, at 40% function, we develop symptoms. And so symptoms are like the pain that she's feeling in her arm, shoulder, neck. So this is the, the big picture of how things develop. So if the symptoms are improved, does that mean the disease and malfunction is gone? Yes. No. Not necessarily. Um, what is that? If symptoms are gone, yeah. I thought it, you have to get rid of the stagnation, and so the flow, and everything improves. That's correct. Your percentage goes up. That's correct. So there are some diseases that don't develop symptoms until they are very advanced. For example? So like um, cancer? Cancer, yes. Diabetes. So there are many that become worse and worse, and then you start to notice. That's when the symptoms develop. So it, so it is possible disease can be there without symptoms. So we use a, a variety of ways to find out where the stagnation is, where the dysfunction is. Those are called signs. So signs, um, we might use x-ray, lab testing. In Chinese medicine, we look at the tongue. Uh, we feel the pulse. And also general, how you look? Yes. And facially, your skin tone, yes. your hair? Exactly. So when the symptoms are gone, we still have ways to understand where the function is by using signs. And the, the long questionnaire form, that big one she just filled out, that falls into this category here. I see. Question? That's pretty good.
I'm wondering about, yeah, I, I know stress and food, I'm familiar with those. And also mentally, when you're concerned about a lot of things, yeah. I remember I was going to a um, chiropractor for some adjustments, and I saw that it really helped me after, you know, going a few times. But before then, I was, uh, I was a little bit up and down with my help, but after going to a chiropractor, it all became steady. And the chiropractor also removed the blockages. of the messages. Because of subluxations. Sub, sub S U B sub L U X A T I O N. And that's the bone adjustments like the spine? Exactly. That's when the, the bones are out of position. Yes, it's stuck. So then when it's back in position, there's not pressure. So for a chiropractic, this would be subluxations instead of chi and blood. Would be the same as? Instead of having these circles, we would put it in the subluxation, the bone that would cause the dysfunction, yeah. I see. So, they should require learning of this in, in like elementary school, middle school, and high school. I agree. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, that's all I wanted to explain today. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you for interpreting. Yes, and I'm a teacher, so of course.